So, hey there, my name is Akshay and welcome back to Geeks for Geeks. And today we are going to start SQL, that is Structured Query Language. And what is the purpose of this SQL? Uh, basically, it lets you access and manipulate databases. Now, before starting this course, I am going to give you a brief introduction what you are going to need for this course. So, this is a course which is used to attach the database to your website. When you create a website, you have to store data, right? And for storing that data inside a database, you need database management system or you need to learn some kind of language which can interact with databases. So that language is known as SQL. So SQL stands for Structured Query Language and it lets you access and manipulate databases. Now let us move forward and know what SQL can do. So SQL can execute queries against a database. Uh, so you have databases on your system. Oh, now first let me tell you what is a database and what is data. So any real life entity or anything which is stored inside your computer, the music files, the text files, the word files, even this PPT, everything that is stored on your computer is called the data. And the collection of data in the form of tables is known as a database. Now this is the brief uh, definition of a database. Uh, I'll, as as we move forward in this course, you are gonna learn more about database and how we can create a database, how we can create these tables, and how we can run queries on these tables. Okay. So what we can do with SQL, we can execute execute queries against a database. If we want to retrieve some kind of data from that database, we can execute queries using SQL. Okay. We can retrieve the data from the database. We can manipulate the data from the database. Okay. So we'll dive into it later. Uh, first, let me tell you, uh, oh, let me give you an overview what we can do. Okay. So we can also insert new records. Now, what are records? Uh, basically, you have tables, right? So inside these tables, you have to insert new records. Like uh, there is a student database. Uh, school database in which there is a name of student, there is a father's name, mother's name, there's mobile number and the other things. Okay. So you have to insert data in that particular table that you can do with SQL. And you can also update the records like uh, some, uh, some students mobile number is changed. So you have to make changes to that database, right? So you can do that using SQL. You can also delete the record from a database. You can create new databases. Uh, so in the database management system, you can create multiple amount of databases. For example, there is a student database, uh, and there are uh, different kinds of databases like, uh, uh, expenses and the employee, the teachers database. So all these databases can be created inside, um, the database management system using SQL. Okay. So all these commands are written in SQL. Okay. You can create new tables in a database. Also, uh, now last three, st these three statements, these are really important and we are going to work on this as we proceed through this course. Okay. So SQL can create stored procedures in a database. Now, what are stored procedures? Uh, so basically, uh, when we are writing queries, uh, it is a single or single line or four to five line statement. Okay. It depends on the user, how he wants to write those queries in SQL, but, uh, you can store these queries using procedures so that you can use them in a faster way. Okay. Uh, how can I explain this? Uh, okay. So let's say I have to write a 10 line query for retrie retrieving some kind of data. Like I want to provide a condition in that uh, and I want to retrieve the data of a student whose name is this and this and who lives in uh, this place and whose mobile number is this. So you will have to write down a query for that. And what if you want to use that query again and again? So for that, we use procedures inside the database and we can create these procedures so that you can retrieve the data faster. Okay. Uh, you can also create views inside the database. Now let us say that I want the student names who lives in Jabalpur. So in that whole database, you just have to run, uh, you can create views inside that database that uh, this view will show the views is just a projection of a table uh, in which you have the selected amount of data whichever the user wants okay so 
when we use these things again and again, again and again, we use views inside our database to get the data faster. Okay, and this views is really essential because you can't run the queries, uh, select queries again and again to retrieve the data. So yeah, that's what views is and procedures too. Okay, so we are gonna learn about these things further in this course. Okay. Uh, you can also set permissions on the tables, procedures and views. Now, what are these permissions? Like uh, there is a database of your school and you want to give permissions to a certain people like uh, the management people and uh, you don't want to give the permission to every single person inside the whole organization. So you can uh, set permissions on that table, procedures and views that these many people can access this database, these many people can view this database or these many people can make changes to this database. So all these things can be given through SQL. Uh, SQL provides you a way to do all those things. Okay. Now let us look at using how to use SQL in your website. So to build a website that shows data from a database, you will need the following things. Okay. First of all, you're going to need a RDBMS database program. That is MySQL, MySQL server, SQL server or MS access. So all these are the RDBMS we are going to learn in this video later. Okay. Now let us look at the second point. So to use a server side scripting language like PHP or ASP. Uh, okay. Nowadays we don't use PHP. We use JavaScript in place of that and it is pretty easy. So yeah, we can connect the SQL database using JavaScript uh, and we are going to learn about it in this course only. I'm going to show you a way in through which you can connect the SQL database using uh, Java uh, script or you can use Python Django. Okay. So yeah, through those things, we can connect your database through the uh, server. Okay. And you can use SQL to get the data you want. As I've just told you in the previous slides that you can retrieve the data using SQL. You can also use it in your websites. Okay. And you can also use it to store the data in your website. Now, what else do you need? So for creating a website, you do need to have, you do need to learn HTML in order to structure the website. And you also need to learn the CSS to style the website. So yeah, there are already courses available for these uh, two topics like HTML and CSS tutorials are available on YouTube. Uh, you can learn from anywhere. It is also available on our Geeks for Geeks channel. So you can check it out. I'm going to attach the link in the I button. Okay. So let us learn about what is RDBMS. So first, let me tell you what is database management system. So as the name suggests, database management system, it is defined as a system which can manage the data. It is pretty simple. It as the name suggests, okay. It is just as the name suggests. So what you can do is you can cre create databases using SQL. Okay. Now all these things can be done inside a database management system tool. Okay. So there are multiple tools like MySQL Server, IBDM2, IBM DB2, Oracle MySQL and My Microsoft Access. So all these are RDBMS. So database management system is a software which can be used to manipulate the data. Okay. Or you can manipulate multiple database at the same time. Yeah. And what is RDBMS? Now RDBMS is different from DBMS and it is better than DBMS because you can relate tables inside RDBMS. Like uh, you can create a big database and you can have multiple small small tables inside that database. And you can also create a big table so that all these uh, small small tables are included in that particular table. Okay. And like uh, let me show you by writing it down. Okay. So let's say I have these uh, table okay and I have another table over here and I want to get uh, the date uh, record whose uh, half of the data is given in this table and half of the data is given in the other one okay so in RDBMS you can link these tables using primary and foreign key shortcuts and you're gonna learn about these things later in this tutorial when we learn about the SQL commands, how we can create those tables. So at the time of creating those tables, we can declare the primary and foreign keys over here. And through that, we can access the data from both of these tables at the same time. So DBMS does not have this uh, feature, you can say. 
but rdbms has this feature and you can actually do these things okay then the data in rdbms is stored in database objects called as tables and table is a collection of related data entries and it consists of rows and columns you all must know that uh, table is a collection of rows and columns right so rdbms is stored in the database objects called as tables okay so in rdbms you can manipulate multiple data uh, tables at the same time and as i've just explained you you can relate those tables okay so every table is broken up into smaller entities called as fields now what are these fields so what we refer to as fields is uh, like uh, the columns are referred to as the fields okay the fields in the customer table consist of customer id customer name cust contact number address city postal code and country a field is a column in the table that is designed to maintain specific information about every record in the table okay so like we have a record of customers and uh, the name of the table is customers okay so these column these are the column names that are given to you in that table like customer id customer name contact number address city and postal code and country so all these columns will have the record of the customers and each record will be uh, will have certain entries like uh, the customer id like 001 002 003 and you can use longer names too okay and the customer name like uh, rahul mohit etc etc so all these things will be given to you in the column uh, in the entries okay and then you can have the contact name you can have the address so yeah these uh, column names basically explains the what this whole field is all about okay so yeah you can create a table in that way uh, so that you have to give the name of the column for whatever you need to be filled inside that column so yeah that is what fields are okay then a record also called as row is each individual entry entry that exists in a table for example there are 91 records in the above customer table a record is a horizontal entity in a table like i have just explained you you uh, the fields are earlier we used these terms right like uh, columns and rows you can also use fields and records so fields are referred to as the columns and records are the entries inside that table that are known as rows okay so inside these rows we can have the data of particular individual or you can say uh, like in this customer table you have a particular customer whose uh, customer name is this this and customer id is, is this this so all this data will be filled inside the row okay so the column is a vertical entity in the table that contains all the information associated with a specific field in a table and the rows are the horizontal entities okay so yeah that's all about this uh, table thing so basically you need to learn these two terms that is records and fields so field are referred to as the columns and records are referred to as the rows and you have to enter the data inside the rows and inside the field there is a top uh, level what you can say the, the top row represents the name of the fields okay so we can we are going to create that in the further video okay now while writing sql commands you need to look at this okay so sql keywords are not case sensitive select is the same as capital select okay so during this uh, whole course i'm going to write the keywords in capital letters so that it is easier for you to understand that these are the keywords and the other are the variables or you can say the column names so these are not case sensitive you can write them in smaller to uh, in small case to and you can write them in capital to okay so both of these things are legal inside sql and you have to add a semicolon in the sql statements at the end of the sql statement so some database require a semicolon at the end of sql statements and some database does not require this so based on the software which you are using and Uh, what kind of system you are using for uh, manipulating the database uh, so basically you need to learn the sql statements and in different different what you can say softwares the syntax is 
it's a little bit different and in some of these softwares you require a semicolon in some of these you do not require a semicolon okay so semicolon is the standard way to separate each sql statement in a database system that allows more than one sql statement to be executed in the same call to the server okay so when you add a semicolon at the end of the line uh, in a uh, SQL query, the system understand that this query is complete and you have to execute this query. So yeah, that gives a call to the server. And in this tutorial, we will be use, uh, we will use semicolon at the end of the SQL statement because we are using the MySQL for running the queries. Uh, in later videos, I will also show you uh, that you can also run these similar SQL queries in different kinds of databases like Live SQL and Oracle DB. So you're gonna learn all of these things in this particular course only. Now, let me give you a brief introduction. So what kind of queries we can run in SQL. So these are some of the most important SQL commands. So there is this select command, which extracts the data from a database. Like I've explained you previously that you can retrieve the data from a database, right? So that is, that is done by using the select command. You can use the update command to update the data inside the database. You can use delete command to delete the data from the database. You can ins uh, use insert into command to insert new data into the database using uh, some other tables or you can copy the data from one table to another inside this database. Okay, you can create databases using create database command. You can alter databases. Alter databases means you can make changes to the structure of that database like uh, there is a column of customer number and uh, you have given a certain limit like uh, the length of the customer number will be 10. So you can later change it using the alter database command and you can, okay, so not the alter database command, you can change the permissions of that database using the alter database command and you can change the structure of that table using the alter table command. You can create a table using create table command. Uh, we are gonna learn about it in the further videos and as we move through this course, we'll learn about all these commands and many more commands in SQL so that you may learn the complete SQL. Okay. Now create table as command is used to create new tables and alter table command is used to modify a table. So as I just gave you the example that you can change the uh, limit of a certain column using alter table command. So after creating a database, we are creating a table inside that database. So while creating the table, you have to give the structure of that table and in the structure, you have to specify the limit of those columns. So let's say I have given the limit to be 10 and later I want to change that limit. So you can do that using the alter table command. You can delete the table using drop table command. You can create indexes which are used to search tables or you can use indexes to find the particular uh, record inside the table. Okay, so we are going to learn about these things later in this course. So you don't have to look into it uh, in more detail right now. We are going to learn about it in further video. So yeah, and you can also drop these indexes. So this is all for this video guys. I think this must be enough for you to have a brief introduction about SQL. And in further videos, we'll uh, learn about these commands. And in the next video, I will show you how uh, how to install the MySQL command line in your systems so that you can run all these queries which are taught in this particular tutorial. And uh, in the further videos, we'll learn about different softwares. So initially we will be working on command line SQL and cause it is very easy for you to manipulate the database using that MySQL command line. Uh, it's pretty light too. You can use it on any system which has a very minimum amount of the system specifications and yeah so i think that's it for this video i'll see you in the next one bye bye